inside. Good morning, apprentices. Good morning. Today we commence with the fourth task of the Insurance Apprentice 2016. Firstly, I need to welcome uh, my co panel members and uh, to my left, Voyo Lee. Welcome, Voyo Lee. Good morning, Justia. Good morning, apprentices. Good morning. Uh, once again, well done on yesterday. I think you, you pulled through together as teams uh, and worked far better as a team and, and a collective. Today and going forward, I think you better start thinking about how you're going to demonstrate your technical expertise and the depth of your skill as an apprentice. And also start thinking around how you're going to work together better as a team while standing out to show that you are the insurance apprentice. And for today, our other panel member is Justin Naylor of Hollard, who also the sponsors of the task today. So good morning, apprentices. Good morning. Good morning. So for today's task, I want to, to challenge you all to really think about what we do as an insurance industry. The cover provided by an insurance policy is only one part of the equation. The other part of that equation has to be the understanding and the managing of risk. For this task, you're going to be split into two teams, and each team will be accompanied by one of Hollard's risk improvement specialists who will guide you along as you walk through a survey. You're going to be going to one of Hollard's commercial clients to do a risk survey. You'll be, to assist you, you will have a risk survey questionnaire that you can use to complete a risk survey assessment. Your task after the assessment will to be present back to us an overall assessment of the risk and also what requirements and recommendations you will require to underwrite the risk. And the team for today will be Carabo, Chris, and Andre, and then on the other team, Alicia, Selena, and Dunati. Good luck, and we'll see you later. Hi, I'm Justin from Holland Broker Markets. We're here today to talk about resilient risk surveyors, and with me I have Roger Ingram. So, Roger, you've uh, you had some time with the team, and I was hanging around in the background. Um, they seem to be asking a lot of good questions. I like the, the fact that they took out the cell phones and, and took some photos. That was good initiative. Uh, Justin, yes, I agree with you. They have used initiative in taking out their cameras. This is actually a commercial client of ours, and actually a fairly good risk. Um, but you, you got there before the, uh, the contestants arrived. And you did a little bit of doctoring of the scene and planted a few tricks. Yeah, we were a little bit naughty. Um, we did go and change the dates on the fire extinguishers. The hydrant immediately outside the client's premises, which would be the first line of point for the fire service, I actually marked as no water. And my team totally missed it. They didn't even go and look at the outside of the building or the outside fire hydrant. We put some key points we wanted them to have a look at, special electrical joins where there were insulation joins, um, they totally stood on top of them while they were talking and interviewing, but they didn't actually look what was under their feet. Selena keeps on wanting to know about the client's policy he currently has in place, and that kind of uh, devoids from the actual risk assessment of the, the premises. Roger, I definitely agree with you. I, I noticed the whole team was asking a lot about the insurance cover, and that wasn't part of the brief, so I think that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Just on the, on the teamwork, I've noticed some, some interesting dynamics. Um, Unati seems to be quite strong technically. He seems to be taking a little bit of a lead. Two girls, um, Selena and Alicia, have formed a very good relationship. They seem to be working well together, which is great. I'm a bit worried that there could be a, a bit of a division in the team between the boys and the girls. Yes, I agree with you. Um, at one stage, Unati looks like he, he wants to be the team leader and the points to look at. But then he does tend to drift off on his own and do his own thing. The girls, yes, they have formed a team themselves. They're both sort of looking at something, but they're not working closely as a team together to work at it. How they're going to put it together in the end, I'd like to see. I noticed they were following um, the survey form very carefully, but almost too carefully. And sometimes they needed to just stop, 
and look around and, and use a bit of common sense, particularly this, the, the cigarette storm piece. Mm. They asked the client the question, what's your smoking policy? And he gave them a good answer. Sure. But they didn't stop and, and look around and say, can we verify this? That's true. They took it from the client's word of mouth that there was a smoking policy in place. But from the prompt I said to them, when they asked me, give us a hint what to do, I said, observe everything, walk with open eyes and look at everything. Come inside. This is your presentation of the work you've done for task four, sponsored by Hollard. And today you will be presenting your tasks to the risk consultants from Hollard, Polani and Roger. So have you thought of a name for the team? Our name is Resilience Risk Surveillance. As is usual, what you'll start with is a executive summary of five minutes. Okay, so at your um, own leisure, you're welcome to start. Thank you everybody. The purpose really of our visit to the premises was to assess the factory with regards to property damage uh, or fire exposures, assess compliance with regards to Occupational Health and Safety Act, and lastly to prepare a list of risk survey requirements or improvements which we felt the client needed to pay attention to in order for the risk to be acceptable. The premises are built with brick firewalls which provide fire resistance to the, pre uh, to the actual building. Let's Excuse me, I'm going to interrupt. Are we going to read through everything here in the five minutes? Is that the executive summary? This is my executive summary, yes. Okay, right. Good luck. You better go. Okay. The premises are built with brick firewalls, which provides fire resistance. The client is in the business of uh, manufacturing branding, which is then taken off-site to uh, third parties, which are his clients, for installation. Ensure has got heavy machinery, which he uses uh, for the production of his uh, the product that he uh, the product that he sells to his clients. There is also a comprehensive maintenance plan uh, that, that is there for servicing of all the machinery. Housekeeping was fairly good, however, there's room for improvement as we did, you know, come across cigarette stumpies within the premises, although, you know, it, the client confirmed that there is smoking is strictly prohibited at the premises. There are two fire extinguishers which were picked up, one on the ground floor and one uh, on the first floor. Which well, is I'm going to stop you again. I'm sorry. This is not a summary. You're basically going through all your findings. Okay. So, so if, you, if you're going to read through all of this, that's not going to serve our purpose of actually you know, understanding uh, just the nuts and bolts of, 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 of what you're trying okay. to, to tell us. Should I start from the beginning? No, no, no. no you carry on and your time, is, your time will be running off when okay. you start again. That's fine. All right, like I said, I think the two most important aspects that we went in at, at, the, at the factory to assess was, was mostly you know, the fire exposures that the client faces based on the, the nature of the client's business and also um, the occupational safety and health, health and safety aspects of, uh, you know, that the business is actually facing. In addition to that, we also wanted to check if there's any public liability that attaches to the risk. Before I hand over to my colleagues, uh, I don't know if there's any questions. Well, yeah, I'd just like to ask one question. Okay, in terms of the outcomes? The outcomes was basically for us to come up with uh, a list of risks, survey improvements, which we would like to um, put to the client's attention, which we, need, we think we need, needs to be attended to. So my fellow colleagues will be addressing those in more detail. In as much as a client has brick walls for fire protection, should the fire not be contained, the steel inside the walls loses integrity um, at a lower temperature than a brick wall, thus resulting in the building collapsing. <coughs> we therefore concluded that an estimated maximum loss is actually 100%. There are two fire extinguishers that we did note it. However, they were last serviced in 2012 and it's not in accordance with the National Building Regulation. There is no fire evacuation plan in place and the electrical paving wires were exposed and left aside on plastic which is not properly insulated. We noticed one circuit breaker at all points were running from this primary source. The premises is surrounded by a 20 with a perimeter fencing throughout the, the building with 24 hour security guards. The factory is at it has an, an active alarm system and this has been regularly tested and is in good working order. The client does use heavy, machi heavy machinery as well as hand tools 
but this does carry potential dangers and can lead to injuries. We propose the following recommendations. All fire extinguishers need to be serviced at regular intervals. With regards to the use of angle grinders and the small machinery, the hot works permit needs to be enforced. We did identify that an evacuation plan needs to be formulated and a designated fire marshal will need to be appointed. All live wires need to be adequately insulated. We recommend that at least three circuit breakers need to be installed. Did you observe your risk entirely? We have, we did. Um, is there a fire hydrant on your risk? There is no fire hydrant in the risk, uh, both inside and outside. You weren't observant? There was on my side. There was a fire hydrant right outside the door of your risk? Uh, we must have. Must have. Okay, you missed the crucial point. That fire hydrant was not no water, which is a critical point you missed. You identify there is water in the building. What's the chance of a flooding risk inside that building? Look, the chance of a flooding risk inside that building uh, is... Broken water pipe, toilet that's blocked. It's high, uh, as I said. Did you notice anything about the client's stock? Yes. yes, it's kept upstairs, which is very good. What about the goods that were standing on the door as you walked in? In fact, finished client's goods directly on the floor. They weren't palletized off the floor to avoid water damage. Thank you, Roger, for the te technical feedback. You are excused. Thank you. As a team, we were accompanied by a risk surveyor and we were tasked to basically walk with the risk surveyor and observe r potential risks within the warehouse. I believe Alicia and I did exactly that. When it came to Onati walking around by himself, I think that's just the way he wanted to do it. He probably wanted camera footage. We were knowledgeable of the fact that we were going to do complete a risk assessment. Completing a risk assessment is exactly that. You're assessing the risk. I'm asking the questions. I like answers for certain questions. I don't like statements being made without it being uh, validated. So I think it's coming down to crunch time and I, I do feel I am on maybe one guy's toes. I take the, the softer approach. That's my natural character. Um, but by no means am I going to let somebody override my decisions. The reason I let Unati remove a lot of what I, I did request for him to add into the survey is because he mentioned that I'm, I'm going on about irrelevant uh, things that's applicable to the survey. He did also state that he's got more knowledge and probably experience in terms of uh, serving a warehouse. The person that I feel I'm irritating the most would be Unati. To be honest on camera, I already addressed this with Unati because I do believe we need to have the hard conversations. My strategy for, for today's task was be a, lead, a leader in a sense that I'm letting the other team members, you know, to, to do the most of the talking so that they could um, showcase or come across that they know the subject matter. There were some shortcomings. I think, you know, we did, we didn't touch more on, uh, you know, the flooding issue, you know, to address the stock which was not elevated or put on pallets. The issue of the fire hydrant, I think we, it's a very important point that we should have actually touched on. Most of the other aspects, I think we did touch on them, and I think we addressed them very comprehensively, which things such as the fire extinguishers, the theft aspects, the Occupational Health and Safety Acts, um, including, I think, even some of the stuff we're not even um, you know, re uh, um, asked on, on the presentation. When I was announced that I was going to be part of a team with two ladies and being the only guy, um, I mean, I can only handle one woman at a time. Uh, but yeah, I think it was very difficult in a sense that I was dealing with Selena, whom I've worked with in the previous task, and I know how slow she is. She can you know, tend to get uh, derailed, ask questions which are not related to what needs to be done. I took it upon myself to communicate with Selena, which I guess I was lucky that she was, a, she was actually very responsive. Alicia, on the other hand, whom is slightly better with, uh, when compared to Selena in, in, a, in a sense that she's able to grasp things very fast. She doesn't like wasting time. However, uh, I think 
Alicia, has, she came into this competition with one thing only in her mind, that is to win. She doesn't tend to either give the, under, the other member uh, you know, a fair chance in terms of the other member expressing um, the ideas or suggestions. When we walked into the building, I think we were a tad bit close-minded, even though our assessor kept drilling us, be open-minded, look at every aspect. I think we focused predominantly on fire and did not touch on flood, um, flood that was to our downfall. Regarding the fire hydrant that was placed outside, I think I interjected um, my team member, Nati, too late, which might have been to our detriment. Having discussed this with Nati already, um, I do think that he has compromised our team's winning today. With regards to Unati dominating or assuming a leadership role, I think it's very important for us not to get confused with the person who talks the most and the person who speaks but makes valid points. And whereas he did come in in answering the questions, that was our play when we initiated the team. Unati was supposed to do the executive summary and answer the questions. Um, the girls' duties was to touch on the various aspects of the risk. There is male versus female issues. Um, I think the males think that we are not strong enough. Certain males, might I add. Others do respect us, others undermine us. I don't think Unati was too impressed with the fact that he had two females on his side given the risk assessment job. But on the flip side, I think he compromised the situation today, even though he was not happy working with us. And I think he does to a certain extent, not fully respect us as females and what we can bring to the competition.